In this video, we'll measure the voltage current relationship for an inductor. The current through an inductor is related to the integral of the voltage across the inductor. In this video, we'll apply a sinusoidal voltage to the inductor, infer the resulting current, and verify that the integral relationship is at least approximately correct. In the last part of this video, we'll examine some non-ideal inductor effects. Specifically, we'll see that the resistance of an inductor may not be negligible. First, just a quick reminder about the theoretical voltage current relationship for inductors. If we have an inductor with an inductance L and apply a current I of T to it, the voltage V of T across the inductor is L times dI by dT. We can convert this expression to an integral relationship by integrating both sides of this equation. Therefore, the current through an inductor is 1 over L times the integral of the voltage across the inductor. In our first demonstration, we'll apply a sinusoidal voltage difference to our inductor. Mathematically, a sinusoid is expressed as A, an amplitude, times sine of omega times T, where omega is the frequency in radians per second. For our lab work, however, we'll represent our frequency in cycles per second, or hertz. This means that our sinusoid is going to be written as A times sine of 2 pi times F times time where F is the frequency in cycles per second, or hertz, and A is the peak value of the sinusoid. If we substitute this into our inductor voltage current relationship and do the math, we find that the current through the capacitor should be negative 1 over L times A over 2 pi F times the cosine of 2 pi F times T. Graphically, this means that if we apply a voltage sine wave with amplitude A, the blue line, to our inductor, we should get a current that looks something like this. The peaks of the current waveform are a quarter of a wave behind the voltage waveform. The amplitude of the current is going to be 1 over 2 pi F times L times the amplitude of the voltage waveform. We'll use this circuit to experimentally investigate the voltage current relation we determined on the previous slides. We'll use a 100 ohm resistor in series with a 1 millihenry inductor. We'll apply a sinusoidal voltage to the combination using channel 1 of our arbitrary waveform generator. We'll measure the voltage across the resistor using channel 1 of the oscilloscope and the voltage across the inductor using channel 2 of our oscilloscope. The resistor and the channel 1 measurement allow us to estimate the inductor current. The current is simply the voltage across the resistor divided by the resistance. We can use a math channel on the oscilloscope to perform this calculation. If we plot the channel 2 voltage and this current, we should be able to experimentally verify the plot I showed on the previous slide. Let's go ahead and do that now. Here's the circuit that we implemented. This is our 100 ohm resistor. This is our 1 millihenry inductor. We're applying voltage across the combination using channel 1 of our waveform generator, the yellow wire. Ground is at the other terminal of the inductor. We're using channel 1 of the oscilloscope, the two orange wires, to measure the voltage across the resistor, and channel 2 of the oscilloscope, the two blue wires, to measure the voltage across the inductor. I've already set up the oscilloscope window to take our measurements. I've got channel 1 and channel 2. I've created a math channel, which is channel 1 over 100, which gives us our current. I'm going to apply a 1 kilohertz sinusoidal signal with a 3 volt amplitude to the system. This is the inductor voltage. This is the inductor current. The shapes are approximately correct relative to what we saw on our expectations. I've also set up a couple of measurements so that we can double check the amplitudes if we choose. Next, let's apply a triangular current waveform to the inductor. Since the slope or rate of change of the current is constant between the peaks, the voltage should be constant between the peaks. We'll use the circuit from before with the input change to a triangular wave to see how this works out in actuality. Our circuit is the same as before. All I really have done is change the amplitude to 1 volt and the waveform to being a triangular wave. If I apply this to our circuit, start acquiring data, my current is a triangular waveform. My voltage is not quite the square waveform that I'd expect. I get some sudden changes, but there's a drift when I've actually got a constant rate of change of current. Let's take a look at what can cause that change. It turns out that most inductors will have some internal resistance. This resistance can, under some circumstances, have a significant effect on the inductor's behavior. For example, 
Our previous circuit illustrated this. Our expected voltage didn't agree very well with our data when we applied a triangular current waveform. A common non-ideal inductor model consists of a resistor in series with an ideal inductor. We can use our DMM to measure the resistance of our inductor. I'm measuring about 2.3 ohms, small but possibly significant depending on the application we're using the inductor for. Now let's develop some expectations as to what our data should look like if our inductor contains some resistance. Here's our example circuit with our non-ideal inductor. The total voltage drop across the inductor will now consist of the voltage drop across an ideal inductor, which is the square wave we expected earlier, along with the voltage drop across its internal resistor. Since the current's a triangular wave, the voltage across this resistor will also be a triangular wave. Since the resistance is rather low, we'll expect fairly small amplitudes. Now, the voltage across both of these together is just the sum of these two, which is going to look something like what we measured earlier.